hi guys welcome back to tiller fashion so i got a few requests for this particular tutorial although it took a while for me to finally make this video i hope it's still useful to someone and i hope you enjoy this tutorial please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video and let's get right into it So I'll be using my pattern paper to draft out the pattern before transferring to fabric and just in case you see that I'm not placing my measuring tape properly it's mostly because the tip of it got cut off so I'll just be eyeballing to get correct measurements. So I'm going to be marking out all my reference lines that's the bust line, the under bust line, the waist line. I have a video on how to take measurements for this so if you don't know how to you can just click on the video that i'm going to be linking at the top right now i'm going to go ahead to mark the neckline width even though it's not relevant because we're going to be cutting this off and also the shoulder width divided by two for the neckline i picked three inches and then i'm going to take whatever the shoulder width is divided by two take it down by one inch next i'm going to mark out the armhole depth and i'm taking mine to be seven inches and then wherever the seven inches stops it's going to be the chest line so one thing about this style is that it needs that or a breast cup just so it can be fitted especially at the top of the neckline so i'm going to be making this using a breast cup and first i'm going to measure the nipple to nipple line on the bust line the under bust line and the waistline and then i'm going to connect that to the middle of the shoulder so depending on the bust size you're going to measure out some inches to the left and to the right of the nipple to nipple line at the under bust but in this case i'm using one inch on the left and on the right making a total of two inches then i'm going to go over to the top to measure how deep i want the neckline to be and i'm taking seven inches so at seven inches i'm just ruling a new line which is going to be the neckline so that's our off shoulder neckline then at the point of the neckline where the dart line is i'm going to take two cm on the side front and one cm on the center front So I measured the chest band so I would get an accurate measurement of what the width of the neckline will be or how wide the neckline will be. And the chest band is just the measurement from each shoulder on the chest line. So for me, it is 12 inches, but 12 inches divided by 2 because it's cut on fold, that's 6. So as I mark out the 6 inches, I'm making sure that I don't include that, that space at the that line there. So like the center front piece is 4 inches, then I'm going to take 2 inches from the side front piece to make 6 inches. That is excluding the dart space there. So before connecting the chest band to the rest of the measurements, I'll just go ahead to take my round measurements. And I'm starting with the bust circumference. I'm going to take the bust circumference and divide it by 4 and mark out whatever I get. Then I'm going to go over to the under bust, divide by 4. And before marking out what I get, I'm going to add back the 2 inches that we took at the nipple to nipple line. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the waist to divide it by 4. And then add back the 2 inches before marking down what I get. After making all the points, I'm just going to go ahead to connect and then extend the line to the chest line. And also connect the chest line to the neck line at the point of the chest span. So I'm going to go ahead to add my side seam allowance which is 1.5 inches and I'm going to add the rest later on when I'm done cutting. Most times when you make curves like this, they end up not being equal. So I'm just here measuring out both of them, seeing which one is shorter than which so I could add back to the measurements. And here the center front piece is shorter by about half a cm, so I'm just adding that back. So 
so i'm onto the back piece now and i marked the zip allowance of one inch then i also went ahead to transfer the reference lines that's the neckline the chest line the bust line the under bust line and the waistline the back piece also needs a dart so i'm just marking out the dart line to be four inches away from the zip allowance and i'm extending the dart line from the waistline up to the bust line and the dart is one inch wide so that's half an inch to the left and to the right of the dart line after that i'll go ahead to take the chest band measurements that we took for the front piece which was six inches and i'm taking this measurement away from the zip allowance so i'm not including the zip allowance in this measurement and then i'll mark the bus circumference divided by four on the chest line and the bust line then the under bus circumference divided by four but i'm adding back 0.75 inch because of the dart and then the waist circumference divided by four and i'm adding back one inch because of the dart and please note that you won't include your zip allowance in all of these measurements So this is the back and the front pieces now i'm going to go ahead to cut on fabric and i'm cutting two pieces for the back and two pieces for the side front and one piece that is cut on fold for the center front and when i'm cutting i'm going to make sure to leave about 0.5 inch around the edges that's aside for the side because we already added this side seam allowance and of course the zip allowance because there's already a zip allowance there so after cutting the main fabric pieces i'm going to go ahead to cut the lining i'm cutting the lining to be the same with the main fabric pieces and i'm using the same material for the lining So you could pad this bust here as you like but i prefer using this soft wording on the lining and then if the fabric piece the main fabric piece is not thick enough i could go ahead to add stay to it to make it a bit thicker but in this case i'm using just this soft wording so i'm going to cut the soft wording to be the same shape with the cup pieces and then they are going to start from the point of the under bust and they are going to stop about one inch below the top of the neckline So this is how the lining pieces for the front is looking like and I went ahead to iron it to glue it to the lining pieces and you could see the main fabric pieces on the top there. So I'm going to sew them together just as they are placed. I'm going to sew the main fabric piece together side by side and then the lining pieces together side by side. While sewing, I'll just make sure to take my time because although both pieces are like curved, they are not exactly the same shape. So I'll just take my time while sewing so I don't make any mistakes. So after joining the main fabric pieces together, I'm just going to go ahead to notch the edges so as to relax the seam. It's very important because it has curved edges. So notching will help the seam to be relaxed and make the work look neater. And then I'm going to set aside the main fabric piece and do the same thing for the lining piece. One more thing to do to the lining piece, especially after sewing, 
is to trim out the excess from the seam and trimming it out will just make your work look neat and flatter and it doesn't make it bulky at the seam lines then i'm just going to go ahead to mark out the points for the dots on the back piece i already have this in my head that's why i'm just marking it out but if you don't have it in your head you can just go and pick up your pattern paper and transfer the measurements for the dots onto the fabric so i'm sewing the dots separately for the two main fabric pieces and the two lining pieces So I'm going to set the back pieces aside for now and then come back to it later. But for the front piece, I'm going to join the lining and the fabric pieces together by the neckline. And how I'm going to do is to turn them right side facing each other and then sew the neckline in and top stitch. And here I'm just notching the center before I start so my sewing can be accurate. And then I fold it back to the front facing me and then sew around the edges to close the edges. So this is how it's looking now although it still needs some ironing i'm just going to set this aside just so we could do the same thing for the back piece i'm going to place the back piece right side facing each other and then sew the top and then top stitch and close the edges I'm going to go over to sew in the zip allowance with a loose stitch because I'll be opening up the stitch later on so that I could join the sides of the front and the back piece. So after joining the sides, I'm going to go ahead to open up the stitch and then fix my zip. So to cut the sleeve, we need two measurements. That is the depth of the neckline and the armhole. So the depth of the neckline that we picked earlier while cutting was 7 inches and then the armhole is 4 inches. So since this is a puff sleeve, I won't be using exactly 7 inches. I folded my material into two and I ended up picking 14 inches for how wide the sleeve will be. And then I'll go ahead to transfer my armhole measurements from my pattern. And I'm making sure to leave 1 inch seam allowance at the top because we're going to be folding in that part for the elastic. And then I'm also going to measure out my length. And then I'm also leaving one inch seam allowance at the bottom because there's also going to be an elastic band there. After I cut out the two sleeve pieces, I'll just go ahead to sew in the top and the bottom 
with the one inch seam allowance that we took so it will be enough space for the half inch elastic band i'm going to be using so this is what i have after doing that and then i'm going to use a safety pin to fix my elastic band for me in order to get the length of the elastic band to use i just go with the normal measurements minus 1.5 inch and then that will be the length of the elastic band i would use so while pushing the elastic band through the channel once the end of the elastic band reaches the end of one side you're going to secure it with a pin so the elastic band doesn't get lost in the fabric So I went ahead to do the same for the remaining elastic bands and now I'm going to remove the pins while holding the elastic band in the channel and sew the elastic band to the channel and then after sewing it's, the sleeve is secure so I could attach it to the rest of the top. So before attaching the sleeve, I'm going to go ahead to sew in the seam allowance at the side and then after that, I could attach the armhole of the sleeve to the armhole of the dress. In all this, just try to iron as you go so your work can be neat. So you could see that the edges are still raw. I didn't fold the bottom edges in because instead of making this a crop top, I was thinking I would make it into a gown. So maybe I'll attach it to something else later on. That's why the zip is extending down. The zip is longer than it should be. But yeah, this is the final product and I really like it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like this video. Leave a comment down below. If you have any questions, you could drop them in the comment section and I'm going to do well to reply them. And I'm going to see you in my next video.